So I was just in Germany, and while I was there, I had the chance to see The Kangaroo Fresh Forung, the second book in the Kangaroo Chronicles film series or franchise based on Marco Wickling's books. Now, my opinion on the books has changed quite a bit since I read the first book. I have now read the entire series, and I think that is a lot funnier than I gave it credit for in the beginning. But the first film is still bad. It's still really generic, and it doesn't really serve as a good adaptation of the series. But I'm pleased to say that actually, uh, Die Kangaroo Verschwörung, which is the Kangaroo Conspiracy, is actually quite good. It works a lot better as an adaptation of the books because it follows much more in the style, which is to be expected because this time Marco V. Kling himself directed the film. I think what was wrong with the first film was that it felt very flat. It felt like someone read the books and thought, okay, how do we weave this into a plot? And then they just made a conventional movie. Whereas this follows much more in the style. It's how do we take the style of the books and then adapt that into a movie? Because what makes the books interesting is that Marco Wickling is constantly playing with form. He's playing with genre, he's playing with conventions of how to write. And you see that a lot more in The Kangaroo Conspiracy, where you'll have sections that are shot as a sitcom, you know, flat camera angles with a laugh track, and there's no real explanation as to why they filmed it that way, they just did. And when you mix a lot of scenes like that, it makes the film feel a bit more fragmentary, but it's also more interesting and engaging and it feels a lot more in tune with how the books are written. The Kangaroo Frischforung is also a lot more successful in its use of running gags and thematic concepts. You have a lot more jokes from the books that are incorporated throughout the film, such as the open rules rock, paper, scissors, that kind of tie the film together. I think a problem that the first film had was that they'd take something from the original books do it once and then abandon it, whereas this film feels a lot more cohesive even though there's a lot more crammed into it and it twists the genre quite a lot more because you see these jokes reappearing throughout the movie. And also I think it's a more interesting concept for the plot. The plot of this movie is that uh, Marco Vickling, after an embarrassing date, tries to get another date with uh, Maria from the previous film, but the only way she'll allow it is if he can convince her climate-denying mother to no longer be a conspiracy theorist. And from that point on, the whole movie is mostly about making fun of conspiracy theorists. And you can tell that Marco Vickling had a lot to say about the topic, and it means that he's not really running out of ideas, whereas in the first movie, the plot felt kind of limp. It felt like, how do we just string bits from the books together? And it didn't really have much interest in its own. Whereas in this movie, you can tell that he's much more engaged with the theme of the books. The use of cinematography is also a lot more interesting in this film than in the first film. In the first film, and I know I'm kind of ragging on it, but it really does pale in comparison to this one. Uh, it felt very flat, it felt very conventionally shot, whereas you can see a lot more experimentation in Die Kangaroo Verschwörung, especially the way it's framed in the very first scene, which is a dinner in a pitch black restaurant. And it, it helps a lot with the comedy. There's a lot better visual comedy in this film than in the first film. As usual, the actors, uh, Dimitri Shad and Marco Vickling as the kangaroo, the, they are very good and they're one of the best parts of the movie. They play off each other well. I have seen some criticism of the movie where the kangaroo is essentially not a communist anymore. They've kind of taken out those aspects from the books and the kangaroo is much more of a generic sidekick. And I do agree that they have changed the kangaroo in that way, but I think that was probably necessary for the film's comedy to work. It's kind of a broad comedy, and I think communism as a theme would require a lot more dialogue and a lot denser dialogue, and I think they wanted to move away from dense dialogue for this film. It, you know, whether or not you like that as a decision is up to you, but I think the overall product of this film is a lot better. 
and that it was a necessary change to make. Something that I think also works way better in this film than in the first film is commentary on modern technology and the internet. In the first film, there's this painful scene where the antagonist smashes his computer screen in frustration and then takes a selfie. And it was one of those moments where I thought, is the director a dinosaur? Someone who thinks all oh, those whippersnappers with their phones always making TikToks? It was so out of touch. But fortunately, this film works a lot better at commenting and making fun of the internet. There's just one joke out of the blue about a dating app for uh, climate deniers and various conspiracy theorists, and suddenly the film just shows this commercial being a parody of German TV. And it's done very deftly, to the point where I was almost thinking, wait, did the movie just stop and the commercial just come in its place? Because it felt a lot more realized. There's even this very well done subplot in the film where the kangaroo uh, is early on caught on film arguing with several conspiracy theorists. And so there's uh, this antagonist who is kind of a stand-in for Alex Jones and Infowars and has his own Infowars style web show. And uh, they paint the kangaroo as almost this George Soros figure, you know, being behind the scenes, kind of a cabal trying to influence everybody. And it works well to make fun of those QAnon types who try and see oh, the Jews are controlling everything behind the scenes. And it just feels a lot more cohesive, it feels like a clear point that's being made that uh, supports the humor of the film. So overall, I would recommend this film quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if it's playing anywhere outside of the German Sprachbund, but certainly when it comes out on DVD, I will be getting it. And I look forward to future Kangaroo Chronicles films. Hopefully they can continue in this upward trend. But have any of you seen the film? Did you like it? Did you have criticisms of your own? Tell me in the comments. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.